previously in Finero. The central and primary blessing of the human mind is thinking. Human beings think in images. That is why you have imagination. Men which are not born again carry imagination. Men which are spiritual too carry imagination. But the results of men which are not born again and the results of men which are born again in the mind of imagination is different. Should be different. Ought to be different. We all have imagination. You all have imagination. The only difference between the men in the world and how they imagine is that there is a place because of the flesh and the carnal affiliations or oscillations. Many of them tend to incline to vanity in imagination. They imagine nothingness in their imagination. The difference between a man who imagines nothing, vanity and vexation of things from the Christian is because when we become born again, the Bible is very clear, we are sanctified by the spirit unto obedience. The difference between the man of the world and the man of the spirit is that we have a sanctified imagination. It is set apart by God and by the Holy Spirit to work for our aid, to work for our favor. And that imagination is the visibility of things according to how God has revealed them to us. God has sanctified our imagination. He knows that there is a drop of holiness as we imagine because of the nature and seed that you and I inherited in Jesus Christ. We don't have vain imaginations anymore. Or at least we're not supposed to have vain imaginations if you assume you can have. You know many people don't understand the, what it means to be new creature. For example, when the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. When the Bible says should not, <laughs> there is a divine command that allows a man not to. When you became born again, it got out of your hand to be a success. It got out of your hand to live or not to live. No, it goes in the hand of God. He only asks you for one thing, allow him. How? Believe! The Bible says, if any lack wisdom, let him ask. For God giveth to him, uh, whoever asks liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. God answers liberally. Praise the Lord. When you ask of God, he intends to give you more than you expect to receive. Never expect to receive a token of the same degree of how much you've asked. Always expect that you receive more than you asked. God does not give you with you, him saying, uh, uh, brother, I should have given, but I have an issue with you, by the way. Remember, you abused your cousin last week. That's not how God thinks. But how are we taught? That when you ask of God, he first puts you in a certain picture. And then he says, huh, did you fast last week? Ah, oh, you didn't fast. You, I'm going to give you a little. You, how many times did you fast? 40 days. Ah, <laughs> you overpause, you understand? And I told you one time the problem. Many people subject God's grace to their graces. They think also God is as grateful as to their degree. Hallelujah. Far from it. God is faithful. He's slow to anger and rich in mercy. He will give you liberally as you ask. He does not grudgingly hold back. He does not complain about giving you much. He just gives. But the Bible says, but when you ask, you must ask in faith. No hesitation of spirit to say, ah, it seems he might not give me. No, he says nothing wavering. Hallelujah. He says only it must be in faith. He that asks no wavering. He says, you don't hesitate. You don't doubt. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts, is like the billowing surge out of a sea that is blown hither and thither and is tossed by the wind. Double-minded people receive imaginations from unsanctified spaces and sanctified spaces. Now, many people are under this evil disease. Double-mindedness. It's a sickness of spirit. If you want to know how men are sick, you know many people think disease is just bodily issues. There are many other ways men are sick and they know not. You remember like in Exodus, I think it's chapter 6, where he speaks that he has seen an evil disease that is common among men. Some people, they yield to the unsanctified self and imagine things that submit them to being human. And then on one side, they also imagine with a sanctified mind the things that makes them God beings. The Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Next verse says, draw nigh 
nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, comma, ye sinners, semi what? Hold on. And purify your hearts, comma, ye double-minded. When a man is double-minded, their hearts are not pure and they are sinners. Which sin? That which is not done in faith. When you became born again, your spirit was reactivated, active, and given life. Because he's a God of spirit, he does not chastise bodies with whom carry spirits. The chastisement of a man's spirit is different from your understanding of chastisement. Because God knows the flesh is an enmity to the spirit. So why should he discipline what is already by nature corrupt? So God's discipline is not to your flesh, it is to, it is to your spirit, if you're a new creature. And how does he discipline our spirits? Conviction. When you're not born again, he convicts you of sin. And many people who are born again think God convicts us of sin. I'm sorry, that's not the truth. God convicts us of righteousness. Why? Because he counts not sin on you. He does not impute sin on you. So he can't count and convict you of what he counts not on you. So God doesn't look at you as unholy. Praise the Lord. Yes, you might have imperfections in your life, but he doesn't look at you as unholy. If he looks at you as unholy, you will become unholy. This is how you know a man has seen God. They seek solitude. Remember Jesus? The moment he experienced the leading of the Holy Spirit, the moment he had the experience of the Holy Spirit ready to lead, he separated himself into the wilderness. Because every man who has seen God seeks for solitude. If you're still lonely when you're in your house, you have not seen God. When a man sees God, he will want to be alone. They will seek him. He will not seek company. Because every moment with him is precious. Moses did not arrive at the experience of seeing God because he went to a prayer mountain. He had just killed a man and he imagined God and God carried him into the wilderness. He didn't need to prepare 40 days of fasting. He, he had just killed a man and then he threw back a bit and imagined God. And the moment he imagined God, the Bible says he fled from the face of Pharaoh. When God starts to separate you, some people will disappear away from your face. Seek the place of solitude with him. He will be more real and appear more real to you. And the more he appears to you, double-mindedness dies. He tells you, set your eyes on things above. You know, at every situation that happens in your, in your life, the first thought that comes to your head, God. Why? Because you are alive unto God. You are awake to the consciousness. You, you don't vacillate between the opinions of men and the opinions of God. You don't even give a mind to what the doctor says. I don't care how bad the doctor has said it is. Hallelujah. Your eyes still go back on him. How? Imagination!